Okay, welcome to the Completed Life Poetry Corner. For this session, we're going to pay a little respect to Walt Whitman here. We are in the, in the shadow of, of a park named for him here in Brooklyn, um, New York. Right off my right shoulder is the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. And so in some regards, it feels as if Whitman should be with us today. Walt Whitman, he publishes Leaves of Grass in 1855, and it's a self-published work. In his own life, Whitman had a series of jobs, but ultimately he was really known for becoming, along with Emily Dickinson, the inventor of modern free verse poetry. But along the way, uh, as, as most artists know, you have to um, find a little bit of work during the day in order to make those dreams um, a reality, and, and Whitman embodies this. Um, he, was a, he was a printer, he was a carpenter, he was a nurse during the Civil War, his project was humanity. His project was the non-market values of creativity and care and nurture. And these elements appear throughout his poetry. For us today, I'm going to share three spots with us, maybe four, that kind of give us a sense of who Walt is and what did Walt see as the purpose of poetry. For the record, Walt Whitman never referred to a poem as a poem, but as a poem. He wanted to keep it all one, one syllable. And to begin with Leaves of Grass, we're going to, um, we're going with Song of Myself here. I'm going to read a few lines from an earlier part of Leaves of Grass, one that Whitman uses to offer us a way to read and understand his poetry. Here goes, stop this day and night with me and you shall possess the origin of all poems. You shall possess the good of the earth and sun. There are millions of suns left. You shall no longer take things as second or third hand nor look through the eyes of the dead nor feed on the specter in books. You shall not look through my eyes either, nor take things from me. You shall listen to all sides and filter them from yourself. What a remarkable invitation of filtering the poem from yourself, from your own experience. And one thing that Whitman is doing very early on in Leaves of Grass is that he is removing poetry from the castles and the universities and the lecture halls. And he wants poems to be things we encounter in our daily lives. He is attempting to elevate the way in which we view our lives, to see life through a poetic light, as it were. And part of that means trusting your own belief. We should also recall that as an artist, Whitman is part of the American Transcendentalist Movement or American Romanticism. And essentially that movement, which occurred during the Industrial Revolution in, 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 the, in the States, was an attempt by a group of intellectuals outside of Boston, New York, and other places who wanted to reclaim the sacredness of the individual. And the primary dogma or doctrine, if, if that's even the right word for this particular movement, came down to two words, trust thyself. Often said, I'm very, very hard to do. Here's another little part from Leaves of Grass, one that I think speaks to the timelessness of Walt Whitman himself. We should also recall that this particular collection was considered by Walt Whitman a record of his days as a young person growing up in New York, living in New York, encountering what New York was becoming. My dinner, dress, associates, looks, business, compliments, dues, the real or fancy indifference of some man or woman I love, the sickness of one of my folks or of myself, or ill-doing, or loss or lack of money, or depressions 
or exaltations, they come to me days and nights and go from me again, but they are not the me myself. It's this notion of the me myself that Whitman is trying to preserve. And you'll find a similar idea in Melville's Moby Dick, well, first published in 1850, in London, then 1851 in the US. And in that particular um, novel, Melville talks about preserving the insular Tahiti of our souls. And so for both Whitman and Melville, both native New Yorkers, there is a sense that there is that calmness within that must always be maintained in the creative process. And both, to some degree, we're masters of understanding that it is indeed quite possible to be on a crowded subway car and to still preserve a bit of one's own sense of inner calm. Moving a little further along here, there are so many astonishing things in Song of Myself. This is one of them, another little moment from Walt. Do you take it I would astonish? Does the daylight astonish? Or the early red start twittering through the woods? Do I astonish more than day? This hour, I tell things in confidence. I might not tell everybody, but I will tell you. Who goes there, hankering, gross, mystical, nude. How is it I extract strength from the beef I eat? What is a man anyhow? What am I? And what are you? All I mark as my own, you shall offset it with your own. Else were time lost listening to me. And that's just a great little moment there of not just listening to Walt Whitman, but to put his ideas and thoughts into conversation with your own idea. Otherwise, as he puts it, it's time lost listening to him. And so as a poet, Walt Whitman is consistently working to create the work of art, but then to remove himself from the work of art. I do not snivel that snivel the world over, that months or vacuums and the ground but wallow in filth, whimpering and truckling fold with powders for invalids, conformity goes to the fourth removed. I cock my hat as I please, indoors or out. Why should I pray? Why should I venerate and be ceremonious? Heaven pried through the strata and analyzed to a hair and counseled with doctors and calculated close. I find no sweeter fat than sticks to my own bones. In all people, I see myself, none more and not one a barley corn less. And the good or bad I say of myself, I say of them. And I know I am solid and sound. To me, the converging objects of the universe perpetually flow. All are written to me, and I must get what the writing means. And I know I am deathless. I know this orbit of mine cannot be swept by a carpenter's compass. I know I shall not pass like a child's carly cue cut with a burnt stick at night. I know I am august. I do not trouble my spirit to vindicate itself or be understood. I see the elementary laws never apologize. I reckon I behave no prouder than the level 
I plant my house by, after all. I exist as I am. That is enough. If no other in the world be aware, I sit content. And if each and all be aware, I sit content. One world is aware and by far the largest to me and that is myself and whether I come to my own today or in 10,000 or 10 million years, I can cheerfully take it now or with equal cheerfulness, I can wait. My foothold is tenant and mortized in granite. I laugh at what you call dissolution and I know the amplitude of time. What a poem. Quite stunning, um, actually, in terms of the, the persona here, insisting upon a almost type of deathlessness or even a, time, a sense of timelessness. And this would have been um, Whitman's exposure to the idea um, promoted in the, in the, in the Vedas of, of Hinduism. He was widely read, and that idea of reincarnation really appealed to him. And each time I read Whitman, you, you really get the sense of, of, of how, quote unquote, deathless Whitman is. Um, his, his words live on with many, many people throughout this great city and, and even throughout, throughout the world. He is a transcendent poet who created a form that persists to this very day. One more little part from Walt. On this topic of death and our own mortality, Whitman's take on it is one that comes very close to what the role of artist will become in the 20th century in terms of thinking about an artist as someone with a type of philosophy of life, someone who can help guide people to a deeper understanding of the world around them. There's many different ways in which people go about finding order. Some may turn to Wallace Stevens, some may turn to Google, um, but you get the point. This is usually called Song 49 from Whitman's Song of Myself. I have said that the soul is not more than the body, and I have said that the body is not more than the soul, and nothing, not God, is greater to one than oneself is. And whoever walks a furlong without sympathy walks to his own funeral dressed in his shroud, and I or you, pocketless of a dime, may purchase the pick of the earth and to glance with an eye or show a bean in his pod confounds the learning of all times. And there is no trade or employment, but the young person following it may become a hero. And there is no object so soft, but it makes a hub for the wheeled universe. And any person shall stand cool and supercilious before a million universes. I call to mankind, be not curious about God. For I, who am curious about each, am not curious about God. No array of terms can say how much I am at peace about God and about death. I hear and behold God in every object, and yet understand God not in the least. Nor do I understand who there can be more wonderful than myself. Why should I wish to see God better than this day? I see something of God each hour of the 24, and each moment then, 
in the faces of men and women I see God and in my own face in the glass I find letters from God dropped in the street and everyone is signed by God's name and I leave them there where they are for I know that others will punctually come forever and ever. So this is quite a poem um, in terms of, um, of not being curious about God, yet off the top of my head, I think there's 18 references to G-D. Um, and so it's a interesting little poem here or passage of a poem where Whitman himself in his working through this puzzle is attempting to remove dogma and instead have a type of spiritual connection with, with the universe. An original connection with the universe was the task, A Place to American Poets, by Ralph Waldo Emerson in his essay, The Poet of 1844. And we see here that Whitman is doggedly at work here. Letters from God dropped in the street. That's just a fantastic image in terms of the idea of um, something divine can be seen in the everyday, or what Whitman called the divine average. You know, this sense that the stuff within us is pretty much all we need.